Yeah, bet you didn't expect a part two to this one so soon, huh? Look, I'm gonna be super honest, I'm still kind of on a Danny Phantom kick right now, and I wanted an excuse to talk about some of the antagonistic characters from this show, given how some of them are pretty cool and have some great designs, so how's about we skip the formalities and get right down to business? That's right, it's time to take five more characters from Danny Phantom and give them teams of four Pokemon apiece, except for Blab Masters because I did him in part one. As I once again tell you what I think it'd be like if Danny Phantom characters were Pokemon trainers. Villains edition. And once again, just in case you've never seen Danny Phantom before, big time heckin' spoilers ahead. Let's start things off with one of Danny's most persistent villains, Skulker. Voiced by Matthew St. Patrick in his first three appearances, and by Kevin Michael Richardson from the episode Life Lessons Onwards, Skulker is a being who hunts rare creatures for sports, using his litany of gadgets and gizmos, and prides himself on being the Ghost Zone's greatest hunter, ultimately viewing Danny Fenton, who, as far as he knew at the time, was the world's only human-ghost hybrid, as the ultimate prey. Ever since the events of the Season 1 episode, One of a Kind, Skulker has gone to great lengths to hunt Danny and take him back to his home on Skulker Island, where he is either going to let Danny live out the rest of his life in a cage, or lay Danny's pelt at the foot of his bed. You know, it depends on the day, really. Of course, for someone so hell-bent on mounting Danny's head on his wall, he sure does end up having to help him out of a jam quite a lot, as the two often end up having to work together to defeat some common enemy. However, when it's all said and done, Skulker's one true goal is, and always will be, to hunt down Danny Phantom and claim him as the ultimate prize. Let's kick off Skulker's Pokémon team with a Feeble, a Pokémon that marks potential targets with a scent and then tracks them down to strike them when they least expect it, much like how Skulker often employs classic hunting tactics to capture his prey, like using sneak attacks or setting traps. Speaking of traps, I think Galarian Stunfisk would be a pretty solid second pick, given that it's a Pokemon based on a bear trap, a perfect reference for the wide array of traps that Skulker uses to try and capture Danny. After that, I'm gonna give him a Reuniclus which might seem like a weird pick, until you realize that Reuniclus using its psychic powers to control a powerful physical outer body, but being just a small, weak being who probably wouldn't stand a chance without it, is pretty in line with how Skulker's body is actually just an artificial technological shell piloted by Skulker's real form, a tiny green ghost who honestly can't do much beyond screaming at everybody to fear him, and actually kind of looks like a really angry Reuniclus if you think about it. And last Lastly, Rillaboom, a Pokemon obviously based on a gorilla, because, ever since Skulker synced up his technology with Tucker's PDA, Skulker was doomed to occasionally be dragged to places related to Danny's Purpleback Gorilla research, to the point where even Skulker's future self, Skulk Tech 9.9, a fusion of Skulker and the technopathic ghost Technus, had to install a Purpleback Gorilla override in the event that Tucker's PDA could hack into his systems again. I mean, to be fair, if you got your ass handed to you by a Purpleback Gorilla, I'm pretty sure that shit would scar you too. Next up, let's take a look at the Ghost Zone's resident bad boy, Johnny 13. Voiced by William Baldwin, Johnny 13 loves exactly two things in this world, his motorcycle and his girlfriend Kitty probably in that order. He's honestly not as bad as some of the other villains in Danny Phantom's rogues gallery, as he doesn't seek to destroy anything or take over the world or anything like that, and aside from causing a bit of trouble for humans now and then, most of his plans just involve him being with his girlfriend somehow. In fact, partway through the series, Johnny ends up being on kind of neutral terms with Danny, and Johnny tends to chalk up most of their fights at that point as him just blowing off steam. Of course, he's not completely above being a scumbag to get what he wants, like when he tried to use Danny's sister Jazz as a bodily host for Kitty so she could escape the ghost zone with him, or all the times that he uses his wicked shadow to cause chaos and mayhem in Amity Park by causing spontaneous misfortunate events. Fuck me, dude, I wish I could blame my bad luck on a living shadow instead of just you know, having naturally really bad luck. Anyway, speaking of Johnny 13's dangerous shadow, let's kick off this team with something to represent it. Gengar, a Pokemon who often causes shenanigans by hiding in people's shadows, 
pretty fitting for how Johnny's shadow causes spontaneous misfortune to befall certain objects simply by touching them. Next up, I'll give him a Go-Goat, a Pokemon who takes design cues from motorcycles, so much so that it and its pre-evolution Skiddo can actually be ridden like motorcycles by the player character in Pokemon X and Y in certain locations in Kalos, obviously is a reference to Johnny's beloved motorcycle that he's almost never seen without. After that, let's go with something of an aesthetic pick, that being Scrafty, whose punk slash outlaw aesthetic is pretty much perfect for someone who's like an old school bad boy type. And let's round out this team with an Absol, a Pokemon often associated with bad luck and misfortune. And specifically, I'd want to give him an Absol with the ability Super Luck, which increases the user's critical hit ratio on damaging moves, since, you know, manipulating luck is kind of the basis of Johnny's powers. Of course, unlike Absol, whose ability to predict disasters made people unfairly judge as a Doombringer when it's just trying to warn people of impending doom, I don't really think there's much to misunderstand about Johnny. I mean, seriously, dude, trying to seduce somebody's sister just so she'll be the host body for your girlfriend? Not cool, Johnny. Not cool. But now I think we need to move on to one of my favorite design antagonists in the show, the fiery rock and roll rebel, Ember McLean. Voiced by Tara Strong, with singing vocals provided by Robin Kermsay, Ember is the Ghost Zone's resident rock and roll songstress, using her electric guitar and her haunting vocals to get what she wants, and being empowered by her adoring fans chanting her name. Not too hard to get those chants going when you have a kick-ass song like Remember to win over the teenage masses of Amity Park. Arc. As a young, rebellious rock star, Ember's not too fond of adults, or authority figures in general, and most of her plans involve ridding the human world of people in those demographics. However, all of that young punk attitude and rock star abrasiveness really underlies a pretty dark past. If you actually look at the lyrics to her most famous song, Remember, there's a lot of hints about what may have happened to her as a human. There's a few different interpretations of this song floating around on the internet, but the way I always read the story of these lyrics is that of a girl who caught feelings for a boy and dared to ask him out, but he stood her up and abandoned her. Heartbroken and forgotten, she started a fire that ultimately killed him, and possibly herself, ensuring that, in this final tragic and terrifying act, everyone would remember her name. What? I said it was pretty dark. As long as we're talking about that tragic past though, we may as well start off our team with a Chandelure. Partly as an aesthetic pick, as Chandelure's purple flames are a pretty decent match for Ember's blue flame hair, but also because its ghost fire typing could be a good callback to how fire was most likely involved in her death. Speaking of aesthetic picks, there's no way a real rock and roller like Ember wouldn't have a Toxtricity, a Pokemon who takes design cues from punk rock musicians and whose methods of attacking strongly resemble the motions of strumming an electric guitar, perfect for someone who channels most of her own powers through an electric guitar, being able to do everything from creating an ecto energy fist to putting her enemies under love spells. Side note, I was considering Toxtricity's low key form for this slot as its blue spike appendages would fit better aesthetically, but I just feel like the amped form would fit better personality wise, given that the nature that your Toxel has to have in order to evolve it into amped form has to be a pretty pretty aggressive and overt one, as opposed to the more chill, reserved natures that result in the low-key form. Of course, Ember's not just a guitarist, she's also a talented vocalist, so I'm definitely giving her a Primarina, a Pokemon that takes design cues from Sirens, Greek mythological creatures said to use their alluring singing voices to lure sailors to their deaths, a solid pick for someone whose schemes tend to involve using her music to hypnotize humans to do whatever she wants. And lastly, we're gonna round out the team with a Delmize, a ghost-type Pokemon born from the fusion of seaweed with the remains of a sunken ship and... Alright, look, I'm gonna be super honest with you right now, um, Delmize is mostly just here as an excuse for me to gush about how cool Ember's pirate outfit from the episode Pirate Radio was. Seriously though, there's an episode where Ember McLean is a rock and roll pirate ghost. How fucking cool is that? And now, dear viewers, shift your eyes to center ring and witness one of the only non-ghost villains in the Danny Phantom Rogues Gallery, the one and only Freak Show! Voiced by John Cryer, 
freak show, born with the name Frederick Isaac Schoenhauer, because this show has all the subtlety of a flying mallet sometimes, is one of the few human villains in the series, coming from a long line of ghost obsessives. He, like his family before him, is a collector of ghost-related magical artifacts and uses them to control ghosts to do his bidding, but unlike Freak Show's family, who only use those ghosts to entertain the masses, Freak Show chose instead to obtain vast riches with the help of his brainwashed ghost minions. Controlling, vindictive, and as charismatic as he is creepy, Freak Show will stop at nothing to make himself as rich and powerful as humanly possible, so as to never again be upstaged by a ghost. I think we'll start off Freak Show's team with something of an aesthetic pick. Mr. Rhyme, a Pokemon based on clowns, mimes, and tap dancers, but also a creature with a pale face and body parts that make it look like it's wearing a black suit jacket and a bowler hat, which would make it a pretty decent aesthetic pick to match Freak Show's choice of fashion, as well as his self-proclaimed anemic flesh. Also, Mr. Rhyme being based on various performance artists would be great for someone who has a strong penchant for showmanship and drama, to the point where Freak Show even feels the need to escape dramatically. Which, you know, as an ex-theater kid, I could definitely appreciate. Next up, let's go with a Crobat. Partly due to its poison typing being a great representation of Freak Show's rather toxic relationship with ghosts, but mainly because Freak Show seems to also have something of a fascination with bats, given the frequent use of bat iconography in his personal effects, not to mention the use of phrases like, look what the bats dragged in. After that, I think Freak Show would have a BEM, whose Pokedex entries state that it can control its opponent its brain and rewrite their memories, much like how Freak Show's first appearance in the episode Control Freaks had him brainwashing ghosts, including Danny himself at one point, to do his bidding. Also, the three dots on BEM's arm that he uses to channel its powers look quite a bit like the gems that power the Reality Gauntlet, a powerful relic that would allow the person who wears it to control and rewrite reality as they see fit, which, in the episode Reality Trip, Freak Show would eventually use to crown himself as the ringmaster of all reality, turning the entire world into a gothic circus in the process. Speaking of the circus, let's round out this team with a Blacephalon, an ultra beast based on the classic evil clown trope in media, which I think would fit pretty well with Freak Show's initial scheme of committing crimes under the guise of a traveling circus called Circus Gothica, of which Freak Show was the ringmaster. Also, having at least one ghost type Pokemon in his command would be perfect for someone who suffers from an intense obsession with ghosts that Jazz dubs Ghost Envy, with Freak Show believing that his audience, his parents, and even himself loved ghosts more than they ever loved him. In fact, that Ghost Envy was so strong that, after some goading from Danny Phantom, Freak Show used the Reality Gauntlet to turn himself into a ghost only for Danny to just instantly get the win by sucking him into the Fenton Thermos. Just too bad that the Reality Gauntlet didn't have some kind of gem of wisdom. You know, just to let you know when your enemies are trying to get you to Jafar yourself, would have been pretty handy. And last, but definitely not least, a powerful, dangerous, and personal foe. One that I believe is Danny Phantom's deadliest villain, Danny Phantom. Well, I mean, kinda, but, you know, also not? Okay, let me explain. The being most often referred to as Dark Danny, voiced by Eric Roberts, is actually, at least in part, Danny Phantom from 10 Years in the Future, but fused with Vlad Master's ghost half, Vlad Plasmius. You see, in an alternate timeline where Danny Fenton cheated on the career aptitude test, causing a meeting between Danny, Danny's family, Vice Principal Lancer, and Sam and Tucker, all at the Nasty Burger, a vatful of nasty sauce exploded, destroying the entire restaurant and killing everyone except for Danny in the process. Overcome by grief, Danny turned to the one person on Earth who could possibly hope to understand his situation, the world's only other human ghost hybrid, Vlad Masters, who he then asked to use his ghost gauntlets to separate his ghost half from his human half in the hopes that his ghost half would be free of all his human half sadness and grief. Except all that really did was end up freeing Danny Phantom of Danny Fenton's conscience as his ghost half used those same ghost gauntlets to rip Vlad Plasmius right out of Vlad Masters and then merged with Plasmius with the latter's evil overwhelming him and driving 
driving him over the edge, causing him to kill his former human self and destroy Vlad's mansion before setting out to unleash his rage on the rest of the world. Armed with the combined strength and powers of both Danny Phantom and Vlad Plasmius, and the complete lack of human conscience and decency to hold them back, Dark Danny then spent the next 10 years of his life destroying everything he once fought so hard to protect, as if he felt the burning need to take out his pain and anger on the entirety of humankind, because if he couldn't live a happy life with those he loved, why should anyone else? So remember when I said in part one that Vlad Masters was ultimately a distorted reflection of Danny and what would happen if Danny didn't have the support system of his friends and family in his life? Yeah, Dark Danny is a much more literal version of that concept because he's literally the evil version of Danny born out of the trauma of losing his friends and family. And if Dark Danny has anything to say about it, absolutely nothing. Not his past self meddling with time, nor his nosy sister trying her damnedest to take him out, will stop Dark Danny from closing his own time loop and ensuring that Danny Fenton grows up to be just like him. Let's start off Dark Danny's Pokemon team with a Zorark, whose illusion ability, which lets Zorark disguise itself as another member of the party, would be a great reference to how Dark Danny disguised himself as his own past self when he went back in time to ensure that Danny Fenton cheated on the CAT, thus closing his own time loop and ensuring his own existence. Plus, I thought it'd be pretty appropriate to have at least one Pokemon ripped directly from the teams of either Danny or Vlad from Part 1, namely Vlad, Hisui, and Zorark, but I'm sticking with a pure Dark-type one from Unova for Dark Danny, given that the Dark-type is known as the evil type in Japan, and Dark Danny's existence is nothing but pure, unadulterated, irredeemable evil. Speaking of which, I'll also give him a spirit tomb, a malevolent Pokemon comprised of 108 souls, which could be pretty fitting for a character who's technically two ghosts put together. Also, spirit tomb being made up of largely wicked souls would be perfect for just how unapologetically evil Dark Danny actually is, at times appearing to take a rather sadistic pleasure in assaulting and mocking his foes. Next up, we'll give him a Mewtwo, a Pokemon known for its terrifying power, much like how Dark Danny was feared in the future by humans and ghosts alike for just how powerful and dangerous he'd really become. Also, both Mewtwo and Dark Danny were the result of misguided scientific procedures that resulted in some incredibly powerful abominations who were so angry and unrestrained that they ended up trying to kill their own creators. And lastly, Exploud, a Pokemon that attacks with howls so loud and intense that they can trigger earthquakes, an absolutely perfect reference for Dark Danny's ace in the hole, the Ghostly Whale, a new and dangerous power where he could emit powerful ghostly sound waves, an ability that allowed him to finally break the barrier around future Amity Park, break into the Fenton Works building to destroy the Fenton Portal, and continue his reign of terror and destruction. Of course, that same ghostly whale proved to be his undoing, as his past self somehow also learned to do it, weakening Dark Danny just long enough to suck him into the Fenton Thermos, and proving that Danny Fenton's future wasn't as set in stone as Dark Danny thought it was. Of course, the real kicker here is that that's also true for Dark Danny's future, because, thanks to a bit of Deus Ex Machina from the Time Ghost Clockwork, the Fenton Thermos containing Dark Danny now exists outside of time, meaning that Dark Danny's existence is no longer tied to Danny's friends and family dying at the Nasty Burger, which means that if Dark Danny ever escapes, he could fight his past self without having to hold back. Except that the show ended before we actually got to see that rematch. Listen, Nickelodeon, all I'm saying is, if Danny Phantom ever gets some kind of follow-up movie or a new season or a reboot or something like that, Danny vs. Dark Danny is your main event, alright? Build to it, book it, print money. But what about you? What Pokemon do you think these Danny Phantom villains would have on their teams? Let me know in the comments below. Give this video a like if you liked it, subscribe for more nefarious videos like this in the future, share this on your favorite social medias, and ring the bell so you always get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video, friendos. Thank <laughs> you.